Hi, I'm Scott Rodell. I'm here at the British Museum and we're having a look at the Sutton who finds and this fantastic Anglo-Saxon sword. Uh, it's been reproduced by many smiths. It's a really fantastic sword. You see the center has a, uh, several bars of twist core and it's really beautiful because they twisted it one direction, stopped twisting it and then twisted it again and put several bars together and then around the edge you have a, a harder steel edging to go around. It's quite a beautiful sword and rare. Uh, so here we have a, a 10th century Viking sword and some people would ask because this is a double-edged sword is it handled or the same way or can it be applied the same way that you would a Chinese gem which is a, a double-edged sword as well and the answer would be no and you can tell that because if you look at the, the hilt design it's quite different you see the way this crossbar is in the large pommel when you grip that sword it's going to really lock the hand into place so you don't have the same kind of wrist mobility that you'd have with the gem. So you know right away that these two, two different types of sword, this, this 10th century Viking sword and the Chinese gem, are not going to be handled the same way. Um, there are people, of course, working to recreate how the Vikings might have fought with these kinds of swords, uh, but that's purely speculation, because we don't have any 10th century records or manuals to tell us exactly how that was done. But you can tell things when you handle a replica because you know how it's balanced and how that grip controls and how you can apply that or how you can wield it. Another interesting thing here in this case is you know, you're looking at a, a sword and we always think of everybody having their own sword, but swords are actually very expensive items. Very few people would have had a sword. Here's what, you, what most people would have had is something like an axe. And this is much more useful because you can use this outside of, of combat, outside of warfare, right? This is useful around the farm. The sword doesn't really have many other uses. Also, any decent blacksmith can make you an axe head. It takes a swordsmith with much more training to make a sword. And likewise here, a spear is a much more common weapon on the battlefield. But this is something that anybody can use, whereas the sword takes a lot more specialized training. So my expertise is in Chinese swords and swordsmanship, but still when you look at pieces like this, you know, from the, from the Bronze Age, uh, this is from 1300 BC, you can, nobody knows how these swords were used, or at least we, we have no kind of records of how these, these swords were wielded. But if you look at the design, you can tell anybody who's handled the sword can give you some idea of how these were used. And you can see this it flares toward the tip. This sword is clearly designed to give a robust cut. And you can see this is every single one of these swords in this case has that kind of design. And you can see from the way the, the hilt is, it gives a freedom of movement that would allow a quick cut. You can also tell from its length there's certain things you can and can't do. This is this is a sword, but it's just barely a sword. You get a little bit shorter than this one here. This is really a knife. This is not going to be wielded like a sword. When you get 25 inches and longer, that's when you start to feel it plays differently. It can really be used like a sword to give a, a really robust cut as opposed to a slash or say kind of a hack with a knife. Um, I would also think all of these are such sharp tips and, and by the shape of the of the grip, you still can give some kinds of thrusting actions. Although you'll notice most of these, except for this one, they have these, these disc pommels. And again, you know, you can only bring that so straight. So giving a, a straight kind of thrust is maybe problematic with this. You'd have to handle it to be sure, but it looks like that would kind of get in the way. But with such a sharp tip, I would still think they're employing the, the, the tip to some degree. So this interesting piece, this is from uh, two swords from the Sassanian Empire. Um, and what's interesting here is that you'll see some similarities uh, in these two fittings, these suspension bands you see at the throat and midway on both of these scabbards. You see similar shaped fittings on Tang Dynasty Dao. And so it's thought that these, that was influenced from the Sassanian Empire. And if you look at the, the straightness of the blade and the length, it's also about the same length you see them on the Tang uh, Dao as single-edged sabers. Uh, what's interesting to note here too is Unfortunately, this one is correct, it edges down, but here they put the, the sword in wrong way around, so that would be, should be facing downward.